Go kill yourself. Why are you still alive? You are so ugly. Rebecca Sedwick, an 11-year-old girl from Florida, received those mean, embarrassing, and hurtful messages on her social media. She was repeatedly cyberbullied until she could take it no longer. And one day, she jumped off of her town's water tower and killed herself. Two years ago, I came home from school to read that story. I was stunned. I was heartbroken, and I was angry. How could a girl younger than myself be pushed to take her own life? I decided right then and there that I needed to do something to stop this pain and the hurting that Rebecca had endured from ever happening again, even though the damage was already done. As a 15-year-old student from the United States, I know that each and every one of my peers are at risk for being a victim or a perpetrator of cyberbullying. That's why I'm on a mission to stop it from happening. Sadly, Rebecca's story is not the only one. Megan Muir was only 14 years old when she hung herself in her bedroom closet, all because she'd received messages on her social media accounts like, the world would be a better place without you. Tyler Clementi, 18 years old, he was just getting used to his new life as a college student at Rutgers University and his new gay identity. But one day, one of his roommates thought it would be funny to post a video of Tyler and his boyfriend in one of their most intimate moments on social media. And by the end of the day, Tyler had jumped off of the George Washington Bridge to his death. I wish more than anything that I could make every perpetrator, every cyberbully that caused all of these deaths rethink what they did. I wish I could give them the opportunity to go back and think about the consequences of their actions. But what if I could? What if I could give these cyberbullies a second chance to consider their decision? Would Rebecca, Megan, Tyler, would they still be alive? Cyberbullying is a huge problem. Over 52% of adolescents in the United States have been cyberbullied. That's 12 million adolescents. And if we look at it from a global perspective, 1.8 billion adolescents are out there. And we're in the middle of a social media revolution, which means more and more these adolescents are getting on social media and more and more are at a risk of being cyberbullied. What is cyberbullying? It's an insidious and electronic form of verbal abuse. And just like real-life bullying, it has horrible consequences. That can include low self-esteem, dropping out of school, substance abuse, suicidal tendencies. In fact, new research from the UK shows that the scars of cyberbullying last well into a person's 50s and 60s. And so, as I started to do more and more research um, into this awful issue, I started to wonder why it was that teens were so willing to post offensive messages on social media. You know, why is it that we were so willing to post these awful things? And I also wondered if adults were involved. So I started to do some research. I conducted a study, and I looked and saw, okay, we're going to look at adults, and we're going to look at teens. Which group is more willing to post something offensive on social media? And it's true, adults can post insensitive stuff on social media, but adolescents are almost 40% more likely to do that. And I was starting to wonder why that was. I have always been fascinated by the brain. 
And I was overcome with this curiosity to understand how the adolescent brain ties into human behavior. And the really interesting thing about our brain is the way it develops from the back to the front. In fact, 90% of the brain, almost everything, is developed by the age 13. Only 10% remains. And I was really interested, what was this 10%? What did this 10% of our brain that was still left to develop, what did it control? Decision-making. That's right. Have you ever wondered why teens make rash, impulsive decisions? It's because our brains are not at the point yet where we can make smart decisions. We don't think through the consequences of our actions. So yes, adults, I will admit, scientifically speaking, you guys can make better decisions than I can. Um, and that's why when we down 15 Red Bulls on a dare, skip an English final, don't study for tests, it's because we're not thinking through what we're doing. We just act. We don't think. And so I was sitting with one of my friends one day, and I was venting about this entire issue. I was talking about how bad of a problem it was, you know, how um, our brains were affected. And she just kind of gave me a look. And she said, you know, Trisha, this is a big problem, but..." Social media sites are already doing a lot to try and stop this, you know? It's not like you're the first one to ever discover cyberbullying. And I thought, she has a point. Social media sites have to be doing something. And it's true, they are. The problem is their solutions are not effective. I like to call social media sites' approach to stop cyberbullying, stop, block, and tell. So they encourage victims of cyberbullying, stop what you're doing, block the cyberbully, and then tell a parent or guardian. And it sounds like a pretty reasonable solution. The problem is, almost 90% of adolescents don't tell anyone that they're being cyberbullied. And it seems a little backward that we're putting the burden of reporting the cyberbullying on the victim instead of attacking it at the source with the cyberbully. I was shocked. I felt like in this day and age, with the amount of technology that we have, there had to be a better solution. And that's when I started experimenting. I wondered, what if I gave adolescents a second chance to rethink their decision? A chance to go, whoa, stop, hold on. You're about to post something really offensive on social media. Are you sure you want to do that? Just a little pause button, an extra moment. Would that change their behavior? I had absolutely no idea, but I knew I had to find out. That's when I had the best idea ever. I was going to create a social media site. It was going to go viral in a few minutes. I was totally going to run Facebook out of business. It was going to be amazing. I was so sure of myself. I had already crowned myself, you know, a budding Albert Einstein, until I realized just how realistic that was. And the fact was, I really wouldn't be able to measure or understand anything off of the social media side. I wouldn't get any reliable data. So I went back to the drawing board. And that's when I created two software systems, Baseline and Rethink. And what did these two software systems do? Baseline presented adolescents with a series of offensive messages, like, you are so ugly. And they asked, would you post this on social media? And the adolescent would answer either yes or no. And we recorded their response. Then we did the same thing with another software system, except this system was called Rethink. And with this system, we presented the same series of offensive messages. And we asked, would you post this on social media? But if an adolescent said, sure, I'll post you are so ugly on Facebook or on Twitter, we went, whoa, stop. Are you sure you want to post this on social media? It could be offensive. So I ended up spending weeks, months in my library testing this, trying to get adolescents to participate in my experiment. In the end, I actually ended up getting 1,500 trials worth of data to look at, to understand if this concept was actually a viable solution to a silent pandemic that's affecting millions. And the results? were stunning. Over 93% of the time, when an adolescent received a rethink alert, when they got that chance to stop, pause, and think about what they were doing, 
they changed their mind and decided not to post something offensive on social media. The overall willingness to post an offensive message dropped from 71% to 4%. That was huge, because my research proved that rethink before you type, rethink before you post, rethink before the damage is done is an effective way to stop cyberbullying proactively at the source. Since then, I've been incredibly blessed. Um, I've traveled the world, um, and I've won a series of international awards, including I was named a Google Science Fair Global Finalist. I've presented my work at the White House. I've presented my work at Google headquarters. And recently, I've learned that, you know, we're going to be traveling to even more new places and spreading our message. But none of those awards and accolades mean as much to me as getting Rethink in the hands of every adolescent around the globe. It was an unforgettable moment when we finally got Rethink out to millions of people. And the overwhelming positive response from schools, teachers, guidance counselors has been humbling and amazing. Thousands of people have already downloaded Rethink on their mobile device, and soon it's going to be released in multiple languages so we can target an international audience. But Rethink is more than just a software solution. It's a mindset, it's a movement, it's a call to action. My goal is to have every school around the world adopt Rethink as their campaign to stop cyberbullying and have every student download Rethink on their computer. I also have a Rethink Ambassador program, and I encourage parents, teachers, and school administrators, nominate two students to be part of our program. They can help influence positivity in a school environment. It's incredible what it means when you don't post something offensive about the fat girl that sits in front of you in class or about your annoying boss. It can mean the fat girl's life or your job. The fact is, we've been handed an incredible amount of power with social media, and with that power comes responsibility. We need to think about every single decision that we make and make the right one. Recently, I received a message from a young girl who was not that much younger than myself, and she said, you know, Trisha, my friend, she's in the hospital because she's been cutting herself, all because she's been cyberbullied. I didn't have hope. But I read about your story, and now I feel like I do. I feel like there are people out there that care, that are helping to end this issue. And it moved me to tears. I hear stories like that every single day. And every single day, I go out there and I work so that I can help end this silent pandemic. The pain is real. The loss of life is real. The damage is done. Choose to rethink. Rethink before the damage is done. Thank you so much.